Hey tech fans, welcome back to Tech of Tomorrow. We bring you all the tech all the time. I'm Eric, your host, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the 21.5 inch iMac. You guys have all seen us do a couple of gaming reviews on this, but now we're gonna actually bring you guys the full blown performance and system review of this new product from Apple. So with that said, let's jump in, check out the specs, the scores, and then hear my opinion at the end of the day so I can hear yours. Let's go. Really the heart and soul of the new iMac 21.5 inch is their IPS technology display. It features a backlit 1920 by 1080 resolution and these models start out between $1,299 and go all the way up to $2,149 maxed out. Now the model that we're looking at today is the 1299 introductory model. It features a 2.7 GHz quad-core Intel Core i5 processor, which features Turbo Boost technology up to 3.2 GHz. It also has 6 MB of Level 3 cache. The memory on this system is 8 GB, which consists of two 4 GB sticks of 1600 MHz DDR3 memory. Now, the maximum memory you can get is up to 16 GB, but you have to have this done by Apple and pay their premium. As far as storage goes, the one we're looking at today has a one terabyte, 5400 RPM hard drive. And that right there is where I feel that Apple has really, really failed. I mean, come on, 100 megabytes read and write speeds, that's very, very slow. If you get the maxed out version, you can get some of their newer technology as far as Fusion goes and you get better reads, but that's only through them and you're still gonna be paying that premium. A few of the ways that having a 5400 RPM hard drive that are really gonna become the Achilles heel in your system are boot up times and when you're trying to access and use your programs. Now, granted, most people who aren't familiar with using SSD or Fusion technology, they're probably not going to notice this. But me, myself, and for users out there who do notice this, this is a very laggy thing. And the thing is that Apple's already included this technology, the Fusion stuff, on many of their other products. So why they didn't include it in the baseline, I really don't know. Now, as far as graphics go, the unit that we're looking at today, the 1299, it features the GT640M with 512 megabytes of GDDR5 memory. Now in the very expensive model, you can get a 650M, but it still only has 512 megabytes of GDDR5 memory. Not much of a real upgrade there whatsoever. Now, as far as gaming goes, you guys saw that we brought you Batman and you do get 40 frames per second. So it's not like gaming is completely out the window. And remember, these are some of the latest first person type games. If you're playing other type games like WoW, World of Warcraft, you're playing Diablo, Command and Conquer, I mean, many, many other style games, this system will play them just fine. And also keep in mind, this is at a 1920 by 1080 resolution, and that's pretty damn good for something that's all in one. Like I've said, the Intel all in ones, none of them currently feature discrete graphics. All you get is the HD 4000 graphics. These having discrete graphics actually make them superior in the all in one department. Plus, you only need a single plug. You plug in the power plug in the back, everything else is wireless. It's pretty much simplicity itself. Now, as far as the speakers go, you're not even gonna have to really go out and buy an external set of speakers with the audio that's on board. The two stereo speakers that are built into the 21.5 inch do a really good job of bringing audio reproduction to you. They sound much better than your common little cheap ones, so that's the department that it's doing very well in. Now, as far as connectivity goes, there's dual microphone ports, a headphone port. We also see an SD XC card slot, four USB 3 ports, two Thunderbolt ports, and those Thunderbolt ports support main display port technology as well, since it's all built into one. Pretty cool stuff. There's also a Kensington lock for those that's important and you get your 10, 100, 1000 megabit per second ethernet. So that's pretty cool stuff as well. Now, one thing to take note of though, there is no CD drive at all built into the unit. I don't know how many people are gonna go, holy shit, this matters. To some people it does. To me, it actually is kind of a, mm, a little bit of a quirk of mine. I would prefer to have a CD player built in. It just makes it easier. But with so many things being offset onto USB drives, it's going to be pretty relevant pretty quick. So probably, you know, within the next half a year, CDs just become a thing of the past and everything's gonna be USB driven. 
And if it's not on a USB stick, then obviously it's downloadable. Now, as far as performance goes, this thing's not quite as fast as my Mac Pro, but it is creeping up on it. And I'm sure when we see the new 27 inch iMac, it's going to really put the damper on the Mac Pro. So there you guys have it. I mean, this thing is really elegant looking. If you walk into an office place and you see it sitting there, it actually looks so nice. You're just gonna look at it and be like, ah, cool. It's not bulky. It's very, very thin. There is no heat actually whatsoever coming off of it, which I think is pretty incredible. The previous generation ones always had heat coming out of it. I never liked that. These ones run very cool, very quiet. They look nice. Like I said, they're coming to market about $1,299. Yes, you can get a PC version for about $800, but no, you're not getting those separate graphics and you're not getting an IPS monitor at all. And those things do matter at the end of the day quite a bit. So really, at the end of the day, the only thing keeping me from giving this thing an editor's choice is that really shitty 5400 RPM. And if you're out there looking, Apple, change that freaking thing. What are you doing? For this price point, the PC users are gonna put their foot right up your collective ass. So change it up. Anyways, hope you guys like this video, folks. If so, hit that like button. Always make sure you're subscribed. And we've got some really cool stuff coming up with the new 27-inch iMac. So stay tuned to Tech of Tomorrow. All right, folks. Also, you guys know that it is the 12 days of Christmas and we've got something really cool. Now, this is a product from the people over at Cooler Master called Choice. Now, this thing is an extended battery pack that'll work with any phone. Doesn't matter what phone you have, this will work with it. So what exactly is it? Well, basically you have your phone, you're out and about, and all of a sudden you find you've ran out of battery charge. And you're like, holy frack, man, what am I gonna do? There's not a plug anywhere. I can't plug it in my button, get a charge, so what am I gonna do? Well, with this, you just plug it into this and you get extended battery life so that you can make that emergency phone call. So that's about it. Now, what I wanna do here, folks, is I wanna hear your comments below and just tell me what is your favorite thing and what is your least favorite thing about the new 21.5 inch iMac? I'll pick from the comments below because everybody has a phone and then I'll just pick from those and then I'll contact you and send this out to you. This is a really cool thing. Like I said, if your phone's out of juice, you're screwed. So Merry Christmas and we'll see you back here tomorrow for more Tech of Tomorrow goodness and the days of Christmas.